Good morning and welcome back to Morning at NTV. My name is Idris Matusegawa and it's about that time we enter the Kickstarter segment of the show. And we are talking about probably a topic that is not familiar to you, green growth. And I have in studio Dr. Kalist Tindimugaya, I hope I pronounced your name right, yes, right. <laughs> who is coming from the Ministry of Water and Environment and have Kate Airy, British High Commissioner. Good morning. Good morning, Idris. How was the trip here? Uh, it's very early start, Idris. Yeah. I don't know how you do it every day, <laughs> but it's lovely to well, be Well, we try, we try, we try. <laughs> so I'll come to you, Commissioner, first. What is green growth? So um, green growth is a really important concept, mm -hmm. actually, and one that we are uh, turning into reality. Yeah. So it really means about supporting economic growth and development, something that's absolutely crucial for mm -hmm. Uganda, yeah. but doing that in a way that ensures that Uganda's natural assets, its forests, its wetlands, its air, mm -hmm. its environment, the things yeah. we all treasure so much, yeah. you know, continue to actually thrive alongside economic de development and as importantly continue to be able to provide the tools and the means for economic development mm -hmm. as well. So a really good example of that is around soil for, for instance. So soil degradation, you know, not taking care of our soils as farmers when we're growing things, yeah. you know, ultimately mean that, uh, you know, crop production is going to fall. Mm -hmm. A green growth would mean that you're investing as much in your soil as you are in your crop, so actually productivity continue to grow and to flourish. All right, and so that's really so the concept. So basically not growth. only focusing on economic growth, but ensuring that the natural resources are preserved as well. Yes, exactly. And I'll come to you, Dr. Kalist. What is the ministry doing towards making sure that that is done? Okay, thank you very much, and uh, nice having you here. Uh, the ministry, of course, is the Ministry of Water and Environment. Mm. It is the custodian of water and environment resources. Yeah. And uh, we need to remember that there's no economic growth that can happen without the available resources on which this growth is uh, uh, best. For example, we depend on water, we depend on forests, we depend on the land, and all of these resources. If they are not available, then we cannot have sustainable economic growth. Mm. So green growth is, again, as Katie has mentioned, we are trying to ensure that we grow economically while preserving the resource on which this economic growth is, uh, is based on. So the ministry is ensuring that we manage water, environment, and natural resources for the present and future generation. Mm. That's basically what we are doing. And there are a number of things we are doing. For example, we are planting trees all over the country because, again, we need the forest cover. We are looking after water resources so that they are available. We don't pollute these resources. We are looking at, at the land. We are looking at wetlands. Again, most of the developments right now are happening in wetlands. If we don't protect the wetlands, then obviously we cannot have that growth that is going to happen now and in the future. Of course, we are also dealing with climate change. Again, climate change is affecting our development, and that's why right now the minister has put in place a climate change policy, and now we have a climate change law passed last year. So we are now ready to move forward and ensure that we have climate smart development. Mm. Is that achievable? It sounds very hypothetical. Where Could we really achieve that? We can, but we have to change the way we are doing things. We mm -hmm. can't continue business as usual. For example, uh, we want to, depend, to protect these resources, but we are destroying them. So we have to change and ensure that these resources are protected. For example, if you look in the Kampara, mm -hmm. when it rains for a very short time, it will flood. Then there will be a traffic jam. We spend hours in traffic jam. Houses are flooded. Some people have been dying. So as a country, do we want to continue like this? So we have to change our mindset. And that's why Uganda has developed a green growth development strategy from 2018 to 2030 to help us change the way we are doing things so that we do things the more smarter way so that we can achieve this. It's going to take, it is going to be a challenge and we actually require us to change the way we are doing things. And that's why every Ugandan has to come in and change the way we are doing things. But also that's why we want to partner with the countries like UK, mm. which have already gone through that to learn from them, share experiences, and see how we can progress. And I think one step is important. We can continue gradually. We need to get there. It is not easy, but we have actually to do the right things so that we can achieve that sustainable growth. Mm. 
All right, Kate, uh, Doctor talks about a strategy mm -hmm. in improving, promoting green growth. Mm. What does that entail? So I think what's really important about what the doctor said was that, mm. you know, actually this isn't a hypothetical thing, right? Mm. So the green growth economy in the UK where you bring together these things has actually created new jobs. Yeah. It's actually worth around 200 billion pounds. This oh. is not like a small niche thing. Yeah. That actually the change that the doctor's talking about actually delivers opportunities for Uganda. Mm -hmm. You know, when we together looked at this, we could see that, you know, this could create around an additional 4 million jobs for Ugandans. It could actually add an additional sort of 10% to Ugandan GDP, mm -hmm. its measure of growth beyond business as usual. Yeah. So these are, these are real opportunities. And the strategy, we've been very supportive of the ministry all the way through this process, including through the UN climate change negotiations. But the key for us and the conversation we've been having um, is around financing of that plan, because all actually, right making changes, the changes that we're talking about, don't come for free, right? They <laughs> actually <laughs> they actually require and the most things. <laughs> and then also, you know, to make sure that businesses can grow in a green way requires mm. investment. And that investment then can boost economic growth, can deliver those jobs that mean so much to us, that mean so much to the government, that mean so much to the people of Uganda, which is mm. what we're actually about as the UK. So I think the key bit for us and why the conference, which I know we're here to talk about, is, mm. is absolutely critical, is it's, it's up to us. One is to share that expertise and best practice, but actually is to get climate financing working for Uganda. Mm -hmm. And it would be good to talk a little bit about that. My, I'm very proud of my government's position, yeah. that we were the first country of the G7, the big economies of the world, to double our commitment to climate financing. Mm -hmm. You know, we want to reach that 100 billion per year target that's the kind of money we're talking about in the global system that is able to support people who need it most to adapt to the impacts of climate change, okay. but as I say, also to seize those opportunities. But we need to make sure that money reaches Uganda. You talk about jobs, 40 million jobs. Four million Four jobs. million, oh, amazing. What kind of jobs are we looking at? If so we could just go into it. Absolutely, so the kind of you know thing that we look at within the, within the um, green growth sort of prism and I'm sure the doctor can add bits to this but you know things like green energy and electricity generation mm. we're talking about green transport so actually you know if you travel on London now you'll see the hybrid buses you'll see the you know uh, carbon neutral kind of methods of transport huge impacts actually on people we talked about you know people's actual health right has yeah. sees a massive improvement if you can deal with urban air pollution levels green industries we're also looking at things like um, uh, uh, in terms of agricultural production, we're talking about um, sort of uh, irrigation systems that are actually climate smart and climate friendly. We're going off to see some of those tomorrow in terms of solar powered green irrigation systems. I mean, that in terms of farming is a, r is a potentially a game changer mm -hmm. of being able to actually move away from rain fed agriculture into irrigation led agriculture, but done in a green growth way mm. that can, you know, double, quadruple yields on the farms. So it's those kinds of initiatives and often it's actually down to the smallholder farmers or down to individual businesses to enable them to make the right investments to make that game changer sort of decisions for them. All right, brilliant. Dr. Carlis, I'll come to you. On Monday, the final investment decision was signed off and as you know, we are starting to do some construction. The pipeline is being constructed that is going to Tanzania and in about three, four years, we shall start producing oil and this has detrimental effects on climate. What strategy are you putting in place to ensure that the oil, as it, it's an opportunity for the Ugandan economy, but it can also affect climate in a very brutal way? What strategy are you putting in place to make sure that it's not an opportunity that causes danger to our climate? Uh, thank you very much. Indeed, uh, as a country, there has always been a concern about the impact oil development will have on, on our natural resources. Mm -hmm. And I think that's why we have moved slowly to ensure that we don't just develop and maybe follow the other countries that have had challenges where you get the oil and then the whole environment or the environmental assets are destroyed. So as a country, we have, when we are developing uh, oil programs, we have a whole pillar of environmental management. 
we have a project before it starts, like for example, the oil pipeline, we had to do a strategic social and environment assessment. We assess the benefits, but also the negatives. So socially and environmentally. Mm. And that's why uh, we have to issue a certificate, environmental impact assessment certificate, which confirms that the project is going to be done in an environmentally sustainable manner. But we also include environmental management plan. And all of that is done in, by, through coordination of the National Environment Management Authority, but it involves all the various uh, stakeholders, including the civil society. For example, where oil development is taking place, we have also already protected areas under the Uganda Wildlife Authority. We have important water resources. From the water resources point of view, we have actually undertaken a study on the potential impact of oil and gas on water resources. And these resources are shared with other countries. They are part of the night. So that one is already ensuring that whatever we do is well managed. So we have a whole strong environmental management component which moves with the development. So I really want to assure Ugandans that we have put in place measures. We already have, of course, the national environment management policy that has already considered issues of oil and gas and how we are going to address them. We also already have the regulations to help us move that agenda. So the monitoring program is going to protect us to ensure that oil development is actually not affecting us. But of course, oil has to be done in a sustainable manner. And that's why, of course, the issue of climate change is addressed as part of that. So any measure we put in place are to ensure that we don't pollute the air, mm -hmm. we don't pollute the water, we don't destroy the ecosystem. And through that, then the climate is protected. But also the climate change policy also has addressed that issue. So we have put in place safeguards to ensure that we develop oil in an environmentally sustainable manner. Mm -hmm. Kate, uh, just to come to you, you talked about uh, back in the UK that you've experienced all this. What are some of the dangers that we might face if we don't promote green growth here in Uganda? I mean, I think um, we know that Uganda is the 12th most vulnerable country in terms of climate change, the impact of climate change. Mm -hmm. And that actually, if, if by 2050, if we don't adapt, if we don't take some of these measures, if we don't invest in green growth and communities aren't able to adapt, then we're looking at sort of by 2050, you know, Uganda will potentially, it will cost Uganda around 3 to 5% of GDP. Now, that's a huge proportion that's of huge. your projected growth, right? Mm. So actually, now, growth does matter. It, it's what actually delivers the money in our pockets at the yeah. end of the day. It's, it's the job opportunities for our children, for our grandchildren. Growth does matter. So I think, you know, the key for us is actually that being able to um, support countries like Uganda, but actually show the leadership on this green growth. You know, for us, there's a there's a huge global threat if we aren't able to keep alive the dream, which is what COP26, the UN conference, was all about, mm -hmm. was getting commitments down on paper from a range of countries, but mainly the major polluters, to ensure that we could actually limit carbon emissions and be able to keep changing temperatures within one and a half degrees that was the key yeah now what's interesting one and a half degrees globally actually when you sort of look at the whole of the world and the commissioner will know this better than i do is that actually it those temperature rises aren't distributed evenly across the world there'll be some parts of the world that have even higher temperature rises and those parts are in the middle belt they're in and around uganda mm. so we have to as a world work together to start reducing carbon emissions and the leadership that my government i'm very proud of shows is showing that actually achieving carbon neutrality getting our carbon emissions down but still maintaining economic growth and that's the key is absolutely achievable and if anything green growth delivers more opportunities than traditional ways of economic development mm -hmm. and that's really the message for us it's not about penalizing countries for di taking different choices yeah. but it's about showing the way and incentivizing countries to show that actually there is another way there mm. is a different there way there is a better way there's a better way mm. that will secure the future for our children and our grandchildren and supporting countries like Uganda to to do that well said and you mentioned uh, COP26 uh, and a little bit of what it was about. How has Uganda benefited from that conference? 
So I think there are lots, lots of sort of achievements that came out of COP26. I mean, just to give you kind of a context, that's, yeah. that's almost 200 countries coming together to commit to take action on climate change. Mm -hmm. You know, this is, this is not an easy topic for many of us. Um, and yet actually getting that consensus across a suite of areas that real, as the, as the commissioner said, you know, mean that people are going to have to make changes in the way that they do things in their countries. You know, to get that together, to get uh, that consensus was actually really important. And, you know, we actually made lots of progress, one on keeping that one and a half degrees alive, secondly on climate financing, actually a lot of progress, including how are we going to support financing reaching countries like Uganda? But also, finally, you know, on adaptation on loss and damage, forests, for example, wetlands that we know that we're losing. Yeah. How are we going to support countries to ensure that those are protected? Now, Uganda, I'm very, very pleased, and this was, uh, this was again part of the partnership between our two countries. Uganda was one of five countries put forward to pilot a new climate financing mechanism that will actually make sure that you know we get the financing flowing from these sort of big numbers that feel very much something up there in the air mm -hmm. down to people who need it most. And, and for us, that's not just about government, actually. That's about private sector. Private sector is going to play a really key part in this, in being able to actually identify those bankable projects, those good investments that are green growth investments, get the money behind them, get them growing. But it's also going to be about communities. And my government also supports uh, a range of initiatives here in Uganda, supporting communities to identify where financing needs are, and then supporting them through the journey of being able to access that financing to make the choice. Mm -hmm. Now, this pilot program we're going to do with Uganda I'm hoping is going to deliver those real benefits because you know the UK there's no point putting money in a pot right yeah for people's future <laughs> if they're not able to spend that's it true, on things true, that are going to make a difference yeah. so I'm, I'm really pleased that we're doing this with Uganda it's a very um, uh, good partnership with the ministry here with the Ministry of Finance as well but like I say this is all about getting that money to the people of Uganda so yeah. they can make the right choices for the future and it is those investments, it's the investments that matter. Mm -hmm. Doctor, how, uh, what should we look out for in this project and how long is it going to last for? Well, m maybe just actually to build on what CKT has mentioned, mm. I think the challenge we have been having is how does money reach the common person? Yeah. In a, a COP, uh, the uh, conference of parties, always we discuss and then pledges are made and the uh, uh, we uh, seek for resources, but the challenge we have been having is, is the money reaching the common person. Mm -hmm. And I think, as uh, Kate has mentioned, we are now really trying to get the money reach the people. Because for Uganda, our major focus is on adaptation. So Uganda, of course, is uh, not contributing significantly to the emissions, but we still have to reduce our emissions. But our focus right now is how do we help Ugandans to adapt to impacts of climate change? And climate change affects the common person. Yeah. So we needed to make sure that the resources reach the common person. And that's why all of these projects we are implementing mm -hmm. actually targeting uh, the, the common person. For example, as Kate has mentioned, we have received uh, resources up to ha about 100 million euros for solar power irrigation and water supply projects all over the country where we are turning boreholes, which have traditionally been pumped by hand into solar pumps so that you can deliver water to the people and then you get people to irrigate instead of people depending on rainfall where the crops weather when it shines for a short time now you can irrigate so those projects are helping people to adapt impacts of climate change and of course for us we are excited about that jobs are being created you can imagine if people are growing crops all year round it means they are going to increase their incomes. Mm -hmm. But we are also looking at jobs along the value chain. There's somebody who's growing the crops, there's somebody who's transporting the crops, there's somebody who's processing, and there's somebody who is actually selling them. So many, many jobs are going to be created along, along the value chain. But we are also saying that we don't just want to do it for today. We want to continue doing it. And that's why the resource base, for example, irrigation is about bringing water to crops. So if you don't look after the water, after one year, the water will not be available, you will not irrigate. But you are also growing crops on land. If you don't look after land, the land productivity will go down. So that's why we are saying, let's have economic growth that is taking care of the natural source base 
on which all of this is depend. And through that, then we will also already be addressing climate change. Because if we plant trees, then the trees are going to absorb the carbon dioxide from the air, then we, re we are reducing the emissions. So it becomes a win-win situation. All right. Kate, uh, there is an upcoming Green Growth Conference. Uh, what are some of the key topic areas that the conference is going to focus on? Yeah, so it's on the 9th and 10th of February, so which I think is next week, if yeah. I'm right. Then, um, <laughs> quite close. Uh, quite close, it's creeping up. And the conference is very much around sort of deepening that partnership on this yeah. topic between mm -hmm. Uganda and the UK. So we have a number of leading um, experts on this from the UK side, and again, from a range of different sectors, because this is also about businesses, it's about NGOs, about that civil society piece, which is important. It's also about community-led kind of, you know, investments, as well as at that government level as well. It's getting the whole of the system to look at how you bring this together, how you work, and sharing that experience of, you know, how we've managed to take this from a from a very niche sector to a mm -hmm. 200 billion pound sector that's generating jobs in the UK, wanting to take what works from that, bring it here to Uganda, adapt it to local context. It's about listening as well, about what could work here, what might work here, and then supporting Uganda to be able to really implement that. Mm -hmm. So like I say, you know, and it's picking up on lots of the same themes. You know, what we're talking about is lots around energy production. I mean, um, for us, you know, there's actually so many exciting innovations now that are proven innovations. They're not brand new technologies. These are now proven technologies able to offer very low cost um, off-grid electricity production for remote communities. So you don't actually need to go for old scale massive grids mm -hmm. across the country. Actually we can look at much more innovative solutions to that. Similarly, you know, um, the Commission has mentioned uh, about sort of um, ensuring that we have sort of drought resistant agricultural investments and irrigation is one of those but there are a range of them actually to be able to support farmers continue to farm, continue to have productive farms despite the unpredictability of our climate that I'm sure yeah. we, we all feel in Uganda. You know, I'm passionate also about the urban environment actually and being able to reduce urban pollution, being able to green the urban environment too. You know, we have investments here as the UK in clean uh, buses and clean uh, boda bodas and that, kind of, and that kind of sort of investments to be able to actually create this as exactly as the Commissioner says, this economic growth, sustainable economic growth, but doing it in a way that really um, prizes and values and natural environment too. So all of those kind of topics will be in and it'll be very much a shared exchange mm -hmm. and we, we hope that it's a platform for actually, a, well we know it will be a platform for an ongoing conversation. Like I say the real prize out of this is going to be able to find uh, those, those innovative ideas, there's bankable projects, those projects that actually deserve money, that mm -hmm. know that they've got something that can yeah. grow and grow and grow, and make sure that they're matched up with the right financing in a way that's just going to set them off on their way. So I think, you know, I'm continually impressed. I've been here for over a year now, just yeah. what an entrepreneurial country Uganda is. We are. And it's that, <laughs> <laughs> and it's that entrepreneurial spirit, but yeah. seeing the opportunities in that green growth and mm. thinking, I've got an idea about, I don't know, solar heated water systems or whatever it is, and I've got an idea that's going to work in this context, mm. and I've got a business case and I've got a business plan, yeah. and I'm just looking for that investment. That's the kind of you know innovation we're after. Brilliant. Doctor, how can we be part of the conference? Uh, first of all, this conference is actually uh, online. Mm. So whoever wants to attend, just log in, then you'll get uh, the uh, connection credentials. So we would want to call upon every person in Uganda yeah. to attend this conference. Listen in, I think as Kate has mentioned, there are a lot of innovations out there. Mm. And we want to learn from those who have already gone through it, but also we adapt them to the local situation. So participation is free, it is online, and I really would want to call upon everybody to just register and you'll get login credentials. Whether you have a phone or you have a laptop or a computer, just connect and then you listen in to the conference. Certainly there's a lot to learn. And I think as Kate mentioned, and probably from the government perspective, we have realized over the years that government cannot afford to move the agenda, economic development agenda alone. Mm. Mm. Private sector has a very, very important role to play. And I'm happy that this conference actually has a very, very big component of private sector contribution and engagement. Where the private sector in the UK 
we are actually interface the private sector in Uganda so that we can learn how do we collaborate, how do we move this agenda forward. But again, for purposes of economic development, job creation, and wealth creation. What's the website you say uh, we can log into? As of Do now, you know? so it is www. I'm going to save the commissioner there. <laughs> www.uk-ugreengrowthconference.com. Yeah. Brilliant. But people well. can also just log in. Internet say e a conference green growth. Green you growth. just get it. Uh, yeah. And you Google it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Right. Google yeah. Thank you so much for coming through and having this conversation. Well, that's all we had for you here on Kickstarter. Just stick around for more on Morning at TV.